Would you spend $30,000 for a mower? How about $27,000? We're going to look at a lawnmower today that's right in that range. And oh, by the way, it's battery powered. Let's go take a peek. Hey friends, it's me, Micah, Homestead Bandwagon. I'm here with this new still RZA 7 Series. This is a 748, 48 inch deck. These things are just coming out. We're demoing it at the dealer. So we're just gonna jump in and I'll tell you my, uh, my thoughts about it. So I'm sure the first question is, who's this mower for? And we'll get to that. That's called a tease. Uh, but this is a commercial style mower, very heavy duty. Um, they rate a walk time of around uh, eight hours with this. Now there's different modes on this thing, so I don't quite understand. Does that mean high speed with high speed blades? We'll have to find that out um, as things progress, but they say an estimated runtime of up to eight hours or like 20 acres. And uh, recharge times, you can recharge in 110 or 220, and we'll get to that. The big thing is, this thing's really, really fast, um, 16 miles an hour. I don't think anybody's going to mow at 16 miles an hour, <laughs> but all right, you can go really fast. The most important thing to me, though, was how smooth the steering was. Uh, a lot of battery-powered uh, zero turns I've been on, you can't predict when the steering is going to kick in, and at low speeds, they're really jerky. They've got tons of torque, tons of speed, but no control. And if you look at these steering bales, they're not jerking in and jerking out. They're very smooth, very good low speed control, which I really liked about this machine. And hopefully this translates into their residential machines that they'll be ma making in the future. But the control on this really, really blew my mind. I haven't seen something that controls this well and this gently. Um, I also had my, this is my rep from Still. I told him it's really important to be able to jump a curb well, with the zero turn. Here. There you go. And this thing has the chutzpah to do it. Um, you gotta take a little bit of a run at it, but yep. you can jump a curb and drive off a curb without it's endangering good, yourself or others. You, you, That's you, really, really, really important um, if we are doing commercial gotta, work to or municipal work down, to be able to get right. to the grass easily without driving all the way around the block. So really yeah, hops a curb so real well. Um, you'll notice he's at low speed here, lots of control. I'm going to keep reiterating that because that's super important and I don't think a lot of the manufacturers of battery powered zero turns are concentrating enough on low speed control. You know, you can make a machine that goes fast all day long and here it goes, it's going to go fast again. Well, maybe in a sec here he'll go fast. There <laughs> okay, he's, he, he's, he's clicking it up into high gear. Yeah, the thing goes 16 miles an hour, it's fast. And that's all well and good, but having that low speed control is super, super important and being predictable so you're not bashing into things. So this machine was both of that, so I really appreciated that. Um, and again, I, I would hope that this would translate into the residential machines. I don't know if it will. This is their, their first battery powered machine, still built it from the ground up. Um, but it feels confident and competent and it is heavy. This thing weighs like it weighs like 1,500 pounds. That's a lot of weight. <laughs> Deck sizes, these come in a 48, a 52, and a 60 inch. Um, they've got all your raising and lowering increments like you'd expect. It, it's basically a regular zero turn, just with a big battery system in it. Um, so, looks nice, bumpers everywhere, like seven gauge steel on the deck, I think. This thing's really, 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 really heavy duty. So we'll get a closer look at the machine here. Um, lights all around, the warning lights, because this is considered a commercial machine once again. Um, little tow hitch on the front. And you'll see in the, in the right-hand corner, there's, there's a plug there. We're going to get into that. That's a, a, an electric power takeoff. But this is a electric zero turn, um, like any other electric zero turn. Your individual blades are powered by individual motors that go to a central controller. Um, if you take this plate out, which took a while to do, um, you get under there and you can access those spindles. So basically what happens is when you blow a spindle out, you're replacing the whole spindle, which is a motor and spindle combined into one. Um, this control screen, screen really easy to see even in bright light. 
Um, pretty intuitive how to use, tells you how much battery percentage you got left, um, what speed mode you're in and what blade speed you're using. And then here's under the deck again. So you can see uh, one of the tops of one of those blade motors. And then this is a master control switch for shutting off the machine uh, beyond just the regular power button. Uh, bumpers around the wheels. I liked that in case you whack into something. And then that's a wheel motor. And these wheels sit really in tight to the machine, which I appreciated. This isn't a super wide machine. So even with this smaller 48 inch deck, you can fit in and out of small spaces. I'll give you a little tray here you can tie stuff down to. Um, underneath this is an access panel to, uh, I think the batteries are in there. And it makes this thing real heavy in the rear end. And a little pin hitch on the back for pulling a cart or something. And there's your charging port. And so here's how charging works. You can charge at 110 or at 220. 110 will take you like 22, 23, 24 hours. 220 will take you over nine. Or there's an optional charging kit, which brings the charge time down to like four hours. But it's not like portable. It's something you'd keep in your shop. So charge time isn't terrible for a machine that they purport will, will go eight, eight hours on a charge. Um, and then under the seat here, you can see this is a, a nice, pretty modular system. Just plug and play. Those are the wires for the, uh, the uh, spindle motors. And I think we'll see people replacing those pretty often on any battery-powered uh, mower over time. So it's nice to be able to just get, get to them and replace them. Uh, suspension seat had a pretty cool little setup here. It's not just springs. It's, it's kind of controlled motion under that seat. So I liked that. I like that you can get under it and clean it. And then this is what really uh, piqued my interest. So these, this is an electric power takeoff. So uh, you can plug in accessories to it, like a powered bagger that'll take electricity from the battery. So there's one on the side and then one on the front. And uh, they're saying, you know, you could use like a broom or something on the front of this thing for doing property maintenance. So there's electricity that you can pull off it to use other steel tools. That seemed like a really cool idea. Of course, it's going to rob runtime and... You know, eight hours of runtime is probably sufficient, but are you going to cut that in half when you're bagging? Something to think about. They're going to have to figure it out over time. So here's the control screen. Um, so you can turn up or down the speed of the machine, and you can change your speed on the fly. And then on the left is your blade speed. So if, we, if we're cutting thinner grass or not really heavy material, you can do it. Um, with less speed, save battery. Upper left-hand corner, that tells you this thing's transmitting. So this can hook to a cellular signal and send you know, information back to your shop or whatever as to where the machine's at, what it's doing, how much energy it has, if there's errors on it. And you can also view these, this error information on the screen. So there's a lot of like diagnostic information in here. Um, you know, again, telling you how much energy use you have. Um, how, how big of an area you've mowed, how, how av your average speed. And again, this can go back cellularly to like your, the mothership back at the shop. So the boss can say, hey man, this guy's been you know, mowing for an hour, you know, at two miles an hour. He's kind of walking the dog here. Let's call him up. You might not love it as an employee, but as an owner or as a manager, this is good information to see, you know, how efficient are we being with our mowing? Um, and again, preferences, low traction mode. That was interesting. I didn't get to try that out. And uh, we already saw the statistics. Um, but this is really good, useful information. Right? Uh, I, this is information that people would actually use, so I like it. A lot of times you'll get these screens that are just full of stuff nobody would use. But that's how we turn on and off our lights right there. So, I don't know, this screen actually seemed pretty intuitive and useful. So, I liked that. Um, good idea in being able to transmit cellularly. Let's listen to the blades. That's at like medium speed. This is at high speed. Well, yeah, they still make noise. Here's low speed. And again, this machine is fast. Um, let's just hear what it sounds like when it's moving.
So the machine is not silent. People can actually hear you coming, which I think is good. But yeah, you can hear those little motors running. So, so I guess the question is, who is this machine for? It's not for a residential user. I don't even think a lot of landscapers would use it, really. I guess municipalities, uh, maybe, um, I don't, schools, I could see using a machine like this. And basically what we're seeing, at least on the West Coast, is you know, cities are saying that they're only allowed to use battery-powered equipment. So they're going to have to get into one of these things. And you know, time will tell if that's a good decision, but that's the world we're in now. Um, I guess some landscapers might buy one of these, but boy, that's a, that's a big bill to pay to have one mower um, that'll hopefully get you through your whole workday. So yeah, this is it, the still RZA 700 series. They're starting with a commercial machine. They're going to adopt these ideas into residential machines. And it's not cheap. All right, that's all I know. Thanks for watching. Uh, tell me in the comments what you think. Uh, pretty interesting machine and seems to really outperform the competition that I've seen.